Today I'm going to show you what I did for a DIY archery backstop. It can be used as a target. Uh, I you know I watch videos like everybody else and see those guys shooting 100 yards. They got these giant block foam targets, you know, to help them do that. Uh, I'm not that guy. I'm not shooting 100 yards. I'm not shooting total archery challenge. Uh, I'm just a guy that likes to sling some arrows in his backyard and Maybe you're the guy that lives in a neighborhood with a privacy fence and uh, you need a way to safely shoot your bow uh, so you don't slip an arrow between the, between the wood and Robin Hood, the neighboring poodle or something. But uh, I've always been intrigued with having a big target just for blind bell shooting to work on form. Uh, also shooting broadheads, something to shoot broadheads in when I want to test those out without having to shoot up my 3d targets uh, I've got friends that come over people that come out of town that come up here to hunt with me that first thing I want to do is break out their broadheads and stick them in my archery target so what I've come up with is a cheap easy way I think I got uh, I bought two tarps at a discount store like an Amazon pallet buyer that sells stuff cheap I paid ten dollars for the big one five dollars for the small one two big ratchet straps that I got from TSC it's the two inch wide I think they're rated for 3300 and 33 pounds a piece and I also use some one inch straps uh, to help compact it but I'll show you what I've done uh, I did use cardboard Now, as you can see, uh, it ain't the prettiest thing and it sure ain't mobile, but it will get the job done. I have been shooting at it with my broadheads and it does stop the broadheads fine. It stops field points fine. The field points pull out of it really well. The broadheads are, I wouldn't shoot an expando in it because it's gonna tear your blades off, but a good fixed blade, of course, when you pull it out, you're gonna tear out some, some cardboard and, and it will eat away at your target. But I have shot one particular spot right in here. In that spot I've shot about 200 shots and probably 100 of them with the broadhead and it has now got to where I am contacting the wood behind it. Uh, I'm hoping that maybe I could go in there and squirt when I get a soft spot. I could go in there and squirt some great stuff foam, some of that window and door. It doesn't expand greatly. Uh, maybe shoot some of that up in there and tighten it up but what I've got here is a target that is roughly four and a half feet long by four and a half feet tall and it's right at 18 inches thick and I'm shooting uh, about 60 pound bow it's right there just a shade over 60 and I get about half an arrow penetration in a new spot if you're shooting 70 or more you know you're going to get more penetration uh, but I will say this I could compact them just a little bit more to tighten them up uh, what I did was in each row I've got two rows here that row and that row there are approximately hundred and seventy five boxes broke down folded flat all of the same kind and you say man, where you get them kind of boxes I ain't got nowhere to get boxes Sure you do. You just gotta try. These boxes here come from the local bread man. And I talked to him. Bread doesn't come in a box, but he sells snacks. I don't know, them little Spanish, little Mexican snacks. They all come in a box. Just so happens most of those boxes were exactly the same size. So I, I talked to him, he has a warehouse. A lot of grocery stores don't let their vendors compact their cardboard in with theirs or they choose not to or whatever they, they have to take it out so next time you're in a grocery store you see the Frito-Lay man go talk to him he's probably throwing boxes away I mean chips come in boxes I don't know how many people have ever worked in a grocery store but they come in nice boxes that would work just as well and I know you got Frito-Lay where you live so next time you're in a grocery store the grocery store might even save you a bunch of boxes the main thing is when you're broke down flat 
you know, they need to be a desirable size. If that thing's going to have a depth of longer than your arrow, you don't want that. You won't be able to get your arrow out if it does go all the way in it. So like I said, these are these boxes were like 24, I think, square when folded flat and 18 inches wide, 175 in each row. And what I did is I laid them out. And of course, it takes a while to accumulate that. I mean, you got to make some trips. You know, they're going to want you to pick them up regular. So if you got a grocery store on the way home or maybe talk to the Frito-Lay guy, he's got a warehouse he works out of. He can stack them up instead of throwing them away. Just go talk to him. I mean, it don't hurt to ask. I got all mine. Took about uh, right at a month. There's approximately, what, 350 boxes there. So I'd swing by once a week, pick them all up. And I didn't ask him to save me a particular one. There was... I'd say another 150 or so boxes I couldn't use, but I went on, carried them out, and threw them away for him in his dumpster. I wasn't going to use them, so I helped him clean up. He was happy with it. All he had to do was open his product, throw his box, stack his boxes up. I'd come back here, get what I wanted, and I'd throw the rest away. Anybody can do it. But I saved these boxes up. You know, I was getting 40, 50 at a time. I just put them in somewhere dry until I got enough to do what I wanted to, and I got enough to do one row, and uh. I got playing with it. I took a one inch ratchet strap, just a little, like a 600 pound ratchet strap. Strapped it, laid it down, stacked all my cardboard up, tightened it up. It wasn't very tight, but it did hold it long enough for me to go get a two inch strap, put that two inch strap on it and crank it down. It was a whole lot stouter strap and crank it and crank it and crank it and compress it even more. Then you put your one inch back on it and compress it down to where it's at. Let your two inch off because by then you don't wound up so much in there you can't really give it no more the one inch holds what you got you just bust open that two take the slack out of it and crank it down again when you get done put the one inch on it that's what i've done now these things are heavy you're gonna need some help getting them to where you got but all i did after that once i got them out here i did it all by myself i had to bring them i don't know 40 or 50 yards down here to the barn but uh just kind of rolled them, had them strapped good where they couldn't go nowhere. I rolled them down here in place, picked the other end up, set it up on there. And uh, before I did that though, I went on and, cause I don't want this thing absorbing water from the ground. I went on and put it up on some blocks and some wood and I laid a uh, tarp, folded up a, I bought a big old tarp for like 10 bucks. It was way bigger than I needed. But I folded it over three or four times to get about the thickness right so I could wrap the total area around it. I laid my two big two inch straps down so I could one one way and one other that way I could pull it both ways. And uh, got one in place, got it set in pretty level, picked the other one up, put it on it, brought my ratchet straps around with the tarp wrapping around it, cranked them down, got both bales sticking together pretty tight. Now I will say this, you'll want to put, put it up against something that would prevent it from tipping. If you have children, I always shoot here, shooting towards my barn. I mean, this barn's got, I don't know, a couple dozen broadheads stuck in it, and I'd be afraid to guess how many field points. I admit it. We all miss. You'd be lying. You've missed. I mean, everything happens, but uh, maybe you got kids that like to just get out here and sling arrows or anything, but you don't want to spend $1,000 when you might could do it for 40 or 50 bucks and still have something. Now, like I said, you can shoot this target out if you shoot it just a lot in one spot, but I use it more as a backstop, um, a broadhead testing block. Just, it keeps arrows from going into my barn. But uh, it's also nice if you like to shoot indoor shoots and you like to shoot those five spots or you like to shoot those Vegas shoots, whatever. You know, and all you got is 3D targets, well this is a great way to set you up a big target, buy you some little paper targets put on there, and give it a shot. You can practice in your yard, mark you off 20 yards, whatever. Um, if you go buy that big block foam target, I, I don't know, I looked at the Reinhardt's all I can find right now, and they're over a thousand bucks for one that ain't even nowhere near this size. So, 40 or 50 dollars, and, and a little bit of effort, and you can be shooting at something that you can go buy you a bunch of these targets. These are the, the turkey I got on here is a Dura mesh. Let's see if I can see that.
they're like twelve dollars a piece or you can buy giant ones they, they make them a whole lot bigger than that i mean you can shoot into it just fine but the one thing i really like about it is when i'm target practice and really really working on form and follow through and stuff i like to shoot at very small dots and the great thing about corrugated cardboard maybe you play golf maybe you don't a bag of these is really cheap compared to some other things you can get plus they they hold the target if you got paper targets they hold in this cardboard just fine that's what i'm using if i can get one out but that's what i'm shooting at if i'm shooting 20 to 40 yards i'm shooting for the end of this uh, golf tee as you can see you just slide them in and guess what you got your target so here's a little look at it from the side you can see my two inch straps coming around and that's what holds both bales together guys as you can see i did wrap the tarp around the outside edges because initially i thought well that'll keep a little bit of water off of it but let's be honest whose wife or girlfriend wants you to have 500 pounds of wet cardboard laying out in the yard rotting so ben's i did mine is up against the barn this does protect it from the bottom and the edges i went on and that other five dollar tarp just nailed me some boards up across my barn i can drape it down throw some tent stakes in the bottom and when not in use i keep this covered up never have an issue stays dry when you come out here you pull a two tent stake flip it up on top and you're ready to sling some air i do have the one inch strap still on it going around it but uh I mean, you can do this for 50 bucks with a little bit of effort and you'll have you a, a spot that's safe you got a safe backdrop you won't have to worry about losing your arrows all summer you want to shoot your broadheads to see how they compare to your field point i mean go ahead you're not going to sit there and just keep on shooting with broadheads you will wear it out but uh versus the alternative i mean sure i can go out and spend 11 1200 dollars and buy something to do that but I got better stuff to do with my stimulus check than spend it on foam to shoot. So that's where we're at. I hope this inspires you to come up with an idea to save a buck. I mean, that's what I'm all about. I'm just a poor guy that likes all the expensive stuff but can't afford it. So um, if you like this kind of stuff and if you're into saddle hunting, I do have a project coming up here shortly that I'm going to be making some preset locations on a budget we all got those spots that we hit every year that are good on certain days of the year you, you know you want to go to it or you got a spot close to work that otherwise you wouldn't be able to hunt if you had to go you wouldn't have enough time to hang sticks and platform and all that but if you had a preset there with the platform already attached to it and it didn't cost you very little why wouldn't you just carry your bow and you saddle to work and swing by and kill the deer on the way home so that video is going to be coming out here shortly i am fixing to go work on one of those right now putting one together so i hope you enjoyed this if you got a better idea on something like this let me know hey i i mean i know they got horse style mats i've used those you can put those up those will work for safety but you can't shoot broadheads in it you can't I mean it's not designed to shoot you're not going to just sit there and shoot it it's great for stopping it you know for safety but I like to do other things I like to buy those Duramesh targets the kids enjoy them shooting something different I mean you can buy a moose you can buy a line you can buy just about any kind of paper target you want so if you got a better idea let me know I would love to know it thanks for watching